Hello and welcome back to my Linux Essentials series, the series that keeps on going, hopefully forever, to teach you all the essentials of Linux. And each of these videos can be watched in any order. Each one tries to cover a specific topic in one video. And today's video is going to cover bash history. And bash history is very important. It gives you a list of commands that have been run on your installation. For example, if a situation was to occur that has occurred in the past, then maybe you could find out what has been done about that situation before, so that way you might know what to do about it this time. Or maybe you want to see a list of commands for no other reason than to just get a historical look at the server, how it was configured, previous commands that have been run, things like that. History is definitely a very valuable thing to learn. Now, speaking of valuable, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode, who has been valuable to Learn Linux TV as Linode is the preferred platform for cloud hosting for this channel. In fact, the entire web presence for this channel runs on Linode. Linode has straightforward pricing, an easy to use dashboard, and you could get yourself your very own Linux server in minutes using their platform. They have all the distributions available that you could ever want, such as Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, even Arch Linux. And you could use their platform to set up your very own web server, perhaps a Nextcloud server. There's all kinds of things that you could use a Linode instance for. And if you're not feeling particularly creative, you could actually spin up an instance to serve as a test server for the various tutorial videos that are available on this channel. And their platform is even better now because they have upgraded their servers to NVMe storage, which is just plain awesome. So definitely check out Linode. I really appreciate their continued sponsorship of Learn Linux TV. Now, without any further ado, let's dive into bash history. What you're seeing on the screen right now is an SSH connection directly to the learnlinux.tv web server, the official website for this channel. So what you're going to see is the history for bash from an actual production server. Now to get started, the first command that we're going to use is simply history. By itself, it gives us, well, the history. Essentially a list of commands that have been run. And as you can see, I have quite a few here. Now, one thing that might be different on your end is that you might not actually have the date and time that a command was run. You might just see the numbers followed by the command right here on the right hand side. Now, later on in the video, I will show you how to get the date and time for your command history. But for right now, we're just going to ignore that. But first and foremost, we can already see the benefit of the history command because we see a history of commands. And while that might not seem like much, it's actually a big deal. Think of it this way. If you've just started working for a company as a Linux administrator and you saw, I don't know, some sort of alert go off on your paging system that there's a problem with this server, and let's just say you've never worked on that particular server instance before, having a look at the history might give you an idea of what the previous administrator might have done to manage the server in the past. So if the issue that you're encountering right now is an issue that was encountered in the past, then this information can be invaluable because you have an entire history of what's been going on with the server. Now, another use case is that maybe if something went wrong, something's broken, some files are missing or something like that, then you can actually view the history for the user that you're logged in as or any other user on the system. So you could try to piece together what exactly happened and what commands were run right before the problem started, which could actually help you figure out the root cause. But there's actually more when it comes to the history than just that. You'll notice again, these numbers here on the left-hand side, what are those numbers and how does it help us? Well, consider this command right here, Ansible playbook dash dash version. So what I was doing the other day was I was actually upgrading the version of Ansible on my server. And after that was done, I wanted to check to make sure that I had the latest version. So I ran this command right here to find that out. Now to run that command again, I could simply just start typing it out. But that takes a while. I don't want to do that. What I could do instead is take a look at this number right here, the number to the left of the command that I want to rerun. And then down here in the command prompt, what I could do is I could type an exclamation mark followed by that particular number. And this is very helpful if you have a command that's really long. Maybe you don't want to type it all again. I mean, yeah, you could probably copy and paste the command. But in my opinion, this is really simple. You just type an exclamation mark or bang, as we call it in the Linux community. 
followed by the number, no space or anything like that. Just enter the command number right after the exclamation mark, and it should rerun that command. Let's go ahead and try it. And it did. It gave me the command right here. If I didn't already know, obviously I knew because I chose to run it, but it gave me the command here, followed by the output. So now you're aware of what version of Ansible I have on my server as of the time I'm recording this video. And that was a heck of a lot faster than typing this entire command right here all over again. Typing exclamation mark and then the number is a very quick way to recall a previous command and rerun it. But that's not all you can do. For example, what I'm going to do is run apt update, but it's not going to work because I'm logged in as a normal user and I didn't use sudo. If I check the history, you can see my attempt right here. I ran apt update as you just saw. But what I want to do is add sudo to the beginning of that particular command. Now I've run history right after that command. So a trick that I showed you guys in a previous video where you run sudo bang bang just like that, that's not going to work here because two exclamation marks after sudo is going to run sudo followed by the most recent command. And what this is going to do is run history with sudo, which is not really going to help us out. So what I'm going to do instead is run sudo and then the number of the command that I want to rerun. In this case, 391. So I'll press enter and check it out. Now it's working. So what I'd like to do right now before I give you guys some additional examples is I would like to show you how I got the date within the history output. So just as a reminder, I'm referring to the date and the time, which is the second and third column respectively. If you haven't configured anything at all, you most likely have the number and then the command only. So how did I get this extra information right here? Well, I can tell you right now, I really love having this information because having a date and time that the command was last run is very important. For example, if you had a server that, I don't know, had some sort of process that someone worked on a couple of months back, you have the date and you want to find out what exactly they did, then you could check their bash history for the date and the time that that was done. And then you have basically all the commands that you need during that window. But again, how do you get that information to show up? So what I'm going to do is edit the .bashrc file, which is located here in my home directory. I'm just going to use nano. It doesn't really matter which text editor you use. And I'm going to edit the .bashrc file, as you see here. And this file is located in your home directory. And I'm in my home directory because I have the tilde right here. But you could type a full path if you're not. Either way, the file is .bashrc. It's in your home directory. Let's check it out. Now this bashrc is custom, so it's not going to look anything like what you might have on your end. But what we're looking for is the history setting. So I'll just scroll down and I'll just jump ahead in the video to where I found it. And here we have the line. Now this one right here, hist control equals ignore both. I'll go over that in just a moment. But this line right here is the line in particular that I want to point you guys to. Hist time format. And this is what I have it equal to. The space here near the end, that's intentional. So what you do is you add this to your .bashrc file, you log out, you log in. And from that point forward, the date and time should be logged for every command that you run. Now, I do want to go over this right here. Hist control equals ignore both. That's very useful. I'm going to show you exactly what that does right now. So what I'm going to do is run apt update yet again. I'll press enter. And of course, I forgot to use sudo, so that's not going to work. So what I'll do is run history. I want to find the command number. I want to rerun that command with sudo. So let's grab the number, except it doesn't show up. And the reason why it doesn't show up here is because I added a space to the beginning of the command. And that's the actual command that I ran. When you have a space in the front of that command, and you have that hist control option set, then it's not going to log that particular command in the history when you prefix it with a space. Why is this important? Why would you want to do this? Let's just say, for example, you have some sort of script or something that you need to run, and there's some confidential information within that command. Now, obviously, typing plain text passwords in the open is not a good idea, but if the command contains a password, you definitely don't want it in the history because, well, if someone got a hold of that history file, they'll have your password. So that's where the space comes in, because what that'll help you do, like I mentioned, is run a command and not have it show up in the history. And you saw me run it twice, and sure enough, it's not here in the history. 
Again, if you want to go ahead and ignore commands that begin with a space, then this is the option to add to your .bashrc right here. Hist control equals ignore both, and that'll get that done. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys some additional examples of history, some miscellany, if you will. First of all, if I type history, and then after that I type a number, maybe I want to see the last four commands only. I don't want a wall of text, I just want the last four commands. You can simply type a number after the history command, and you'll see only that number of commands, as you can see here. And you get the idea. Now, of course, if you want to grep for something, you could definitely do that because, well, most of the commands, if not all of them in Linux, or at least all the commands that are worth using, can be chained into other commands. We could run something like history. We can grep for something. Maybe I'm curious about packages that have been installed recently. Then what I could do is pipe history into grep, and I could grep for apt. And then if this works, we should see all the history lines that include apt. So I'll press enter. And that's exactly what I'm seeing right here. You can see when I added the Ansible repository, when I was searching for the Ansible package, I ran apt update, and I installed nano because it was missing on this machine before I hit the record button. You get the idea. I have a list of all the commands that include apt. So this is a great way to search the history for a particular term. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark will run the previous command, but prefix it with sudo. But that only works if the command that you want to add sudo to is the most recent command. If you've run something else, that's not going to work. But what I'll do is run apt update again, which is going to fail, obviously. And if I wanted to rerun that command with sudo, then I could type sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark. And that's going to add sudo in the front of that command, which now works. Now, another trick that's worth showing you guys is that you can hold control and press R, and that allows you to search through the history. You can start typing, and then what will happen is that the output will be narrowed down to what you're typing. So if I type sudo, well, already we see sudo apt update. So if that's the command that I wanted to run, I could just press enter right here. I was able to rerun that command very quickly. But what if that command was not the one you were looking for? So again, I'll hold control and press R. I'll type sudo, and then I'll press control R again and again, and again, and again. So as you can see, when you hold control and press R, and then you start typing, it narrows down the command to the most recent entry that matches what you're typing. And if that's not what you want, you just hold control and press R again, and that'll repeat the same search again, but it'll show you the previous entry from the one you're viewing, and you can just keep going and going and going until you find the command that you want. So in some certain circumstances, that could be very helpful. If you decide that you don't want to run a command, you can just hold Control and press C, and that breaks you out of that reverse I search, and you're back to the command line. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to it. The history command is fairly simple. We simply type history, and then we get a list of commands that were recently run as this particular user. And of course, if you have access to root or sudo, then you can log into another account and view the history for that account, because every user account will have their own history. So go ahead and practice with the history command, and I'm sure you'll learn it very quickly. It's one of the easier commands to learn and one of the more useful commands that I definitely recommend that you memorize. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful in teaching you all about the basics of bash history, which again is very useful. So definitely practice everything that I've taught you in this video and let me know in the comments what you thought about this video or what you'd like me to cover next. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.